What is going on, comic fans? Welcome to the Legion of Comics. I'm Mark, and today I'm here with my top 10 picks for this coming week's new comic book day. Let's get right into it. Shout out to the homies over at Big Time Collectibles. Be sure to check them out at their website or follow them on social media. Always doing some fantastic stuff that if you need anything cleaner press, my friend Justin over on Instagram can hook it up. Check out the description. Links are in there for all these fantastic people. And as always, a huge shout out to my local comic shop, ABX Comics and Games. If you're ever in the area of Augusta, Georgia, be sure to swing through and check them out. That's where I'm going to be picking up all of these fantastic books that are on this list. And also, I do want to put out the reminder that Comics Carrying Cancer, the mega event, this will be the third year, it's taking place right here on YouTube, October 20th through 22nd. Be sure to check out Comics Carrying Cancer on Instagram for more details. Myself, Rob's Fat Sacks of Comics and DJ Links are all monitoring that uh, Instagram page. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or want to donate in any way, shape, fashion, or form, be sure to hit up that Instagram page. So let's get into it. This is going to be the new comics coming out September 19th and 20th of this year. It'll be next week. DC drops on Tuesday here, so I want to make sure I cover those bases. And this is a very DC-heavy week. It's been kind of a mixed bag for me the past couple of weeks, but it's pretty much straight DC with a just a very small exception and kicking it off right out the gate is world's finest issue number 19. This is going to be the second part of that flashback story to seeing where Batman and Superman first teamed up, how they became the world's finest duo and the story that brought them together. It's Mark Wade writing Dan Moore's art. Fantastic series. This is probably the most consistently awesome ongoing series on shelves right now. I mean, just check it out for Dan Moore's art alone. They've pulled off mega events inside the pages of this, and it's so good that it's even spun out into the World's Finest Teen Titan series. So I highly, highly suggest checking this one out if you want a fantastic read. And it's also set in its own time period. This is an undetermined time in the past. It kind of takes place between issues or between panels of past stories. So it's kind of getting to do its own thing. It's not beholden to modern continuity or all the events going on and stuff like that. It's just a good time. Next up, we have Superman number six. Joshua Williamson is crushing it on this title. Jamal Campbell does have the cover. He's not on interiors for this one. It did say that there's a guest artist for the interiors, but this is also the first appearance of a brand new villain. It looks like they're doing a lot of new characters in the Superman run. And finally, the Unchained is supposed to be getting uh, revealed in this issue. I don't know to what degree, if it'll just be a cameo, a little tease or what, but it says the Unchained story starts right here, and uh, we can see where Dr. Farm and all these previous villains of Lex Luthor, nonetheless, has been working on something big behind the scenes, and that, I think, is what we're going to get the reveal of. I'm happy to see that Night Terrors is over, and we're back into the regular scheduled Dawn of DC programming. Night Terrors was actually pretty good. If you didn't read it, go check it out. It's definitely worth the read, but I'm very happy to be back on pace with our regular DC stuff. We have some good momentum going. Let's keep it going, and let's see what's going on with the titans as well while we're at it we got tom taylor taking on the second biggest team at dc comics right behind the justice league with the titans now with the justice league gone this is pretty much your premier team right now in main continuity stuff at dc comics the team is facing a blast from the past with brother blood but now he's kind of coming to the forefront of uh the public's eye and addressing his uh misgivings of the past his crimes of the past and really offering his services his cult if you will and offering uh to the public not only does that sound crazy it gets a little bit crazier with aqualad having joined his rank so we're going to get to see what's going on with that it's been a long two months waiting with that reveal that aqualad is rocking with brother blood and his new cult that's going to space it's getting some weird stuff with that guy but the series is definitely solid the team dynamic is great tom taylor was writing very well for this one so i'm excited to see what he's going to do moving forward now this next one this is a huge one this is really huge everybody pay close attention to what's about to happen in wonder woman we were getting preview pages all last week and uh, this is the brand new wonder woman issue number one starting the numbering over we have uh, i think it's daniel sampier on the art the same guy that did the phenomenal artwork for dark crisis and tom king is going to be writing this i'm really excited for that i'm adding wonder woman to my pool list for this they gave us a little prelude to it in that uh, Wonder Woman 800 issue. We were introduced to the brand new character Trinity, the existence of two more lassos and what they do and uh, their, their bigger picture. We don't have all those details yet. But we're going to be getting into it, I'm sure, in this series. But the whole premise behind this first arc is the Amazons are wanted. There is a massacre 
that takes place and an Amazon is uh, the guilty party in it. Why that person did it, we don't know. Who exactly is that person? It looked like Cassie from the preview pages, but uh, I don't think it's supposed to be. I'm excited to get into this. I'm excited to see what Tom Taylor or Tom King brings to it. I'm a huge fan of his writing, and it's going to be interesting to see him taking on a main continuity ongoing series again. It's been a while since we've seen that. He's been on all the Maxi series stuff, absolutely crushing it with stuff like Human Target, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. Dude's just killing it. So let's see what he does. Next up, Donna VC's Catwoman issue number something. I'm not excited to be picking up a Catwoman issue, but I am reading all of the Gotham War stuff. I'm reviewing all of it and doing the DC deep dives over on Sector 2815's channel. Every Monday, those go up at 10 a.m. So check that out if you want to follow along with DC events and stuff going on. Him and I cover all of that over there Monday mornings at 10 a.m. Sector 2815 on YouTube. And uh, so this will be technically the third part in the Gotham War. I'll be honest with you. I'm pretty impressed with what it's doing so far. The premise is bananas. Like the entire Bat family is on board with Catwoman's idea of reforming criminals by training them to be proper cat burglars. Stupid, right? Yeah, it is. It's ridiculously stupid that the Bat family would be in on that. So it looks like just Batman and just Damien have common sense left over. And uh, they're, they're rebelling. They're pushing back against the Bat family. So uh, to be honest with you, I'm just saying because that, that action was good. The pacing was good. I don't know about Teeny Howard writing stuff. I don't, I don't think there's anything she's done before that I can rave review about. But Chip Zdarsky is really the mastermind behind all this. So we'll see where it goes. I haven't been overly blown away by his run on Batman, but it's been pretty good so far. And the fact that Zura Na is still like in the background of Batman's mind and he's a little bit more rough around the edges, a little bit more savage. It's going to be a cool dynamic between him and Damien and see how they... Uh, tear the city apart getting it back in proper working order speaking of batman sean gordon murphy's the white knight universe has its next installment this coming week with issue number five of generation joker so this one this is another one of those filler ones sean gordon murphy is not writing this one katana collins is that's his wife who helps out with these so it's kind of like the filler between the main stuff like they did the harley quinn mini now we're doing generation joker where it's focusing on harley quinn's children who are grown up and kind of rebelling because they want to know the truth about her dad and all this and that and He's kind of an AI, and that AI is expiring, and before it expires, he wanted to show them the real him. It turns out the real him is a terrible person, and it's bouncing around. They're trying to get to the kids before they get themselves killed or before the government gets to them, and now that uh, Neo Harley is back in the picture, it looks like, and is now running around with the kids, so we'll see where it goes. Uh, it, it is better than it sounds, to be honest with you. This whole uh, White Knight universe is actually really fantastic. They brought in Wonder Woman. They've teased Superman. We got Jon Stewart in there in small parts, but they're there nonetheless. And I guess it's really building up and setting up the next big installment that Sean Gordon Murphy will be helming himself. And for that, I'm definitely sticking around. Next up, coming in at number seven on the list, another huge one, a brand new title under the Dawn of DC banner. We have Green Lantern War Journal issue number one, written by... Dun, 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 dun. Philip Kennedy Johnson, the man behind Action Comics, the current Incredible Hulk, phenomenal writer, a cannot miss writer. You got to follow this guy if you don't already. He just, everything he does is just solid. So we already got primed for this series starting in the back pages of, what is it? The main Green Lantern title written by Jeremy Adams. So there's been three parts to this whole homecoming storyline with Jon Stewart. He's putting down the ring and he's chilling out and he just wants to be a family man. But it turns out he's going to have a calling bringing him back in. And then there's back pages. We get introduced to the Guardian, who is that all green John Stewart. He didn't need a ring. He was the physical embodiment of the ring and stuff. And it turns out that looks like it was in a separate universe kind of thing. So they're sending this Green Lantern back to this universe, to our Earth, Earth Prime, to enlist the help of John Stewart. So he's going to have to get back in the saddle and get back to ring slinging. I'm definitely excited to see what Philip Kennedy Johnson is going to do in here. Next up, and man, this is... This right here, this this book done sent me down a rabbit hole. If you follow me on Instagram or my community tab here on YouTube or over on X or anywhere else, you'll see that I have been burning through the Miller World stuff from uh, Kick-Ass to Wanted to all the Jupiter's Legacy stuff. We got the Chrono Knots, uh, Superior, what is it, Superior. I mean, I've been going through all the Miller World stuff all because of this book right here, the original Nemesis, all of Mark Miller's stuff, all of it. Is all coming together in the big, big crossover event for the first time. Stuff he's worked on for over 20 years, all separate. He's bringing them in all under the basis of the fraternity from Wanted has trained Nemesis. And now he's going out and slaughtering anything that looks like it could be a good guy or a superhero. And how this is going to play out, no one knows. 
All I know is my boy Huck right there is featured in issue three, and I fear for the worst for his life. We also have these kids around here from this book that I'm not familiar with. It's called Night Something. They're like little vampire kids or something. It's a book I haven't gotten to yet. I'm trying to go as fast as I can through all of this stuff. Uh, I've got Chrononauts Volume 2 and King of Spies to go through uh, here tonight. I'm hoping to get through, and uh, I'm trying to order this book Empress before this book gets any farther. But between issues two and three, I managed to read like nine different trade paperbacks. That's how good this is, that it makes you want to just read all that. And that's how comics are supposed to be. So if you have not already, check out Big Game. I actually recommend you going back and grabbing Nemesis Reloaded. It came out like, I don't know, about uh, six, eight months ago. It was just five issues. Most of all this stuff in the Miller world are just short five, six issue one and done stories. So go check out Nemesis Reloaded. That's where they really set up the bringing together of the Miller world. And if that doesn't hook you and get you excited to read comics, I don't know what will. Fair warning, very mature content. So that's it for all the books. That's actually eight. So I did go back and I found two covers to round this list off that I think are can't miss covers. And going back to Superman issue number six, this beautiful Lieber Mayo cover right here. There's few people that can just really draw Superman and just make you have to pause and just like, yo, that's insane. This is one of those covers. Most definitely just embodies him perfectly. I love how Lieber Mayo draws his symbol. Like it's almost reflective and stuff. Like it's reminds me of that Nicolas Cage stuff that was from that old movie that was never made. And then lastly, coming into number 10, we have Green Lantern War Journal number one variant by none other than John Jang. Again, another artist that just makes me stop and just have to study the image and look at all the intricate details and style. Like this is a wild image, this huge like energy pack on his back going down to his weapon here. And the fact that he's wearing like the Kevlar with the, like it makes me want to know what's going to happen in this story. Just there's so much in that image. It's just I need answers to it now. So that's going to do it for my top 10 list. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're looking forward to picking up. Are you excited for big game war journals? I want to hear your thoughts down below. And also, lastly, don't forget to hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, check out my merch store to support the channel, or hit that join button, become a channel member today. And until next time, as always, I'm Mark, but we are Legion.